there comes a point in um, in every organization uh, when they are like 50 maybe 100 people and it goes even more uh, severe when it uh, goes beyond 150 to 200 people is that things uh, suddenly start to get complicated uh, things suddenly start to get uh, complex because you just have too many things uh, or people uh, taking your attention or pulling away at your attention at any given time and as leaders what we all want to do is to multiply our impact right that's where the focus uh, is or should be to how can we multiply our impact how can we multiply the results the revenues uh, the people, the happiness, the joy that, that people are having uh, and the value that you're delivering for every stakeholder, not just your customers, but to every stakeholders. Uh, but I think one thing which uh, a lot of people miss, and this is something which I want to address, is uh, like the key six things that uh, you should look for when you uh, engage in a leadership development or a coaching program. Like what kind of outcomes or what kind of capabilities should you have or your organization have after any such program right that's why i wanted to record this video uh, and one thing i think which uh, often get missed is that uh, to multiply you first have to simplify right like you cannot multiply when you cannot even see what is happening when you cannot simply see what is happening you cannot multiply a complex system right to multiply you have to make something distill down into its basic and then that allows you to multiply that so a key part of um, any leader's responsibility is to first simplify and then multiply. That's how I like to do everything that I do to simplify this whole complex world of uh, uh, leadership development or like what does a company or a business or the leaders need to do or need to become uh, to scale their organization uh, to the next level. And as I said, when the complexities start to become too much for, uh, for the CEO, for the founder, and the way I have simplified that is creating a set of uh, six choices which uh, every leader has to make and any leadership development program I think should address or should create those outcomes. Uh, and I shared, uh, uh, I, I can put, up, put this up on the screen right now uh, of these, uh, what these six choices are. But if you see the left hand side, uh, these three choices are basically about simplification and the three choices on the right hand side are basically about multiplication. And there is no point in talking about how do you multiply, how do you expand, how do you grow uh, your impact unless you can uh, simplify things first, right? So I want to go over these six outcomes, uh, which are also correlated to these uh, six choices uh, that uh, any good leadership development or coaching program. Uh, and once again, right, I might be the guy for you or not, um, but I think it's very important from uh, my experience to share what am I learning and what is it that uh, you should look for from um, from any such uh, program? The first choice, right, or the first outcome that any program should give you is to give you clarity, complete clarity of what are you creating, right? What results are you creating? And if you have a big team, if you have a team of 100 plus people, you probably have a team of uh, around uh, 7 to 10 leaders, right? So with your leadership team, you have absolute clarity of who is doing what, who is responsible for what and by when and for which reason, right? Why are they doing this? Uh, because one thing which complexity does, it, it creates confusion, it creates doubt. And that's where you lose your focus, that's where you lose your time and you lose your energy. So the first choice or the first outcome that you should look for from any program is to get absolute clarity. And this clarity, once you have it, right, why are you here? Why is each of your teams here? Why and what is each member's responsibility? What is your responsibility, both in the long term, like one to three year range, but also in the short term, in the quarter, this month, this week, but getting absolutely clear of who does what, by when, and for what reason, is something which should give you time. Right? And time is the ultimate simplification, right? If you have time, and you can do anything and a key challenge for a lot of leaders is overwhelm and the first outcome after making this choice that you should look from any program and uh, what people who have worked with me have been able to do is to save 25 to 60 percent of their time right of their time in the current calendar so imagine you can do what you're doing or produce the results what you're producing in half in spending half the time for you as well as your team Right? And I invite leaders to have two days on their calendar 
I invite CEOs and everybody reporting to the CEO to have at least two days on their calendar completely free of any meetings or any work which can serve as a distraction from them thinking about the future, from them thinking about the multiplication, from them, th them thinking about the strategy or some of the key challenges that they are facing. So one of the outcome that you're looking for from any program is time on your calendar, free and energetic time, right? Not just distracted or when you're tired, but happy time for you when you are free, relaxed and you can focus. The people that I work with are able to save time by up to 25 to 60 percent, right? So up to half the time, more than half the time that they are able to save, then they can spend it uh, on their business, on the future, or it can also be for their life, for their health, for their hobbies. Because when we talk about leadership, we cannot ignore the human element, right? If you are healthy, if you're having a fit body, if you're having uh, a, a family, friends, you have any other passion that you have, if that is taken care of, that will allow you to be more fully at work. That will allow you to take decisions better, faster, and also deal with surprises better. So the first outcome is clarity in what are you creating and who is doing what, and specifically time on your calendar. Right? The first thing that you're looking for is a lot of free space in your calendar. And I literally mean a lot. The second outcome that you are looking for from any good leadership development or coaching program is a state of presence where you impact a room or where you impact a person just because of being in front of them, right? So that means that your level of attention, your level of energy and your level of being transforms so much that just by being in front of somebody, either a group or an individual, you impact them, right? You people remember you because you were there. More than what you say or what you do, people remember you. That's your presence. That's your leadership presence. And why this is an act of simplification? Because complexity, what complexity does, it pulls, at least our, from our brain, it forces us to multitask, which is something which we are not built to do and which only leads to overwhelm, which only leads to distraction. And over a long period of time, it leads to stress. It leads to a lot of other challenges which are not the best state of mind to be for a leader, to take decisions fast, to take decisions which are higher quality and to actually be there where you are, right? So for me, presence is simply being where you are and being available to what is happening around you. And that is the ultimate simplification. If you can be present with the people in front of you, with the challenges in front of you and be aware of the goals, of the targets, of the vision or the exponential dreams that you have right and i don't mean incremental but i mean exponential dreams and vision that you have for the future unless you are present it takes away it saps away from the quality of everything that you do for some of the people that i have worked with others around them have started to ask them that what are you doing what are you doing to carry this kind of a presence to carry this kind of a calm and balanced attitude but how are you able to respond to this situation in such a way? Or how are you able to not get triggered? How are you able to respond to this one person behaving this way in such way, right? Which is a huge change for their own history, their own past habits, but also to the people. They are so surprised and they are so taken aback by the value that they are actually asking the people that I'm working with that how are they able to do so? This is the second outcome that you're looking from any program is to shift your presence in such a way, in such a massive way that people around you notice, people around you are surprised and they are looking for how can they do the same, right? And presence is before you even open your mouth, before you even say or do anything, your presence is visible, your presence is infectious. So that's the second outcome that you should look for. The third outcome that you should look for from any leadership development program is connection between people and the key to that is listening key to that is listening in a way that people have never been listened to before right and that's one of the signals that you can look for that do people tell you that nobody has ever listened to me like that and as a leader if you can build the capacity to listen to those around you not just your top level leadership team of 7 to 12 people but also your entire organization no matter how big it is if 50 people or 150 people 
if you can listen if you can sense the pulse if you can sense what is happening where are they coming from what are their fears what are their concerns what are their challenges then that level of listening is an act of simplification right because without listening you're still taking action you're still creating strategies you're still communicating to your people but then if you do not listen if you do not understand if you do not have that connection everything that you say it's almost like running blind it's like hitting arrows in a dark room and yes some will hit but most of them will not and that creates a lot of wastage of effort of energy and it creates endless and uh, ne- unnecessary frustration and stress for not just you but also everybody in your organization but listening to simplify things listening to understand listening to get clear on where is the other person coming from like listening to the other person's emotions listening to the other person's life what matters to them why are they here what motivates them and why are they happy if they are happy why are they frustrated if they are frustrated listening and these three the first three steps as i said are the simplification unless you can simplify you cannot multiply this is like setting the foundation for the next phase and we'll talk about them next the fourth outcome that you should look for any leadership development or coaching programs like how will your life or how will your team be different is are people having courageous conversations and do you sense momentum do you sense momentum in your team are people talking are people challenging each other are people talking what they were not talking earlier right and all of these conversations are a matter of courage you need courage to have those conversations which people already know but they're not having right so that's the next level of outcome that are people having courageous conversations right courageous conversations are direct when people are direct when people directly go to the heat of the matter rather than like going zigzag or going in circles people go direct people become candid people share what they are experiencing what they are feeling including their fears and people ask directly what the other person is doing and we don't get caught up in the niceties of culture of society what we should be doing and not be doing and instead start to act from the commitment that we have taken for the future for our customers for our stakeholders right so can we act in a direct candid and yet in a respectful manner that takes our commitment forward right we are not trying to create a safe space here and even though a safe space is wonderful but what we are really what you really want to see in your organization is a brave space where people are not afraid to ruffle the feathers people are not afraid to challenge each other people are not afraid to even challenge you even if you are the ceo and say how is this related to what you say that you are committed to right when we say that we have this as a value how does this action relate the amount of people challenging you will increase and that should be one outcome that you're looking for because that means that you're creating more leaders in your organization and not just followers and this kind of brave space and this kind of conversations is not surface level conversations they are real vulnerable conversations they are really requiring everybody and you to be open Right, to open about your fears to open about things that you do not want to talk about and this is where language gets powerful right we can talk all day and language can be simply mere talk and nothing gets done or we can do go directly to the heart of the matter and we can speak one sentence and it creates impact so much that a whole day of speaking cannot this is what i am talking about people start to have conversations and you will be able to see it you will be able to observe it if nothing changes in the behavior of people in the way people talk in the way people interact then you are going not going to get any different results conversations is are the glue which tie an organization together and that's where you should be able to see a very clear a very noticeable impact so imagine how will it be if you can cut every 60 minute meeting that you have into 20 to 30 minutes that's the kind of conversations that i am talking about right and uh, very recently a, a a client of mine said that i am able to cut down meeting time from 60 to 20 minutes and even the 20 is a stretch because we kind of talk about in the first 5 minutes of the meeting everything that needs to be talked about we don't 
go around in circles we don't uh, like uh, try to brush the main uh, leave the main issue aside for the last 10 15 minutes we directly go to the heart of the matter and in the first 5 minutes we have such an impact that no meeting even if it is scheduled for 60 minutes goes or in the, and is going beyond 20 minutes now and you see how big an impact that can have on the person's time not just the time saved uh, but also their impact also their state of being also their mental state and how much energy and effort does that save for the entire organization the fifth outcome that you should look for from any leadership development program is are your people and are your teams playing together or do you see people getting disengaged do you see people thinking only about themselves or people thinking about themselves first are people willing to re- take risks are people opening up to offer support even at a personal cost to their own team or their own objectives or their own bonuses or salaries or something like that but are people really playing like a team are people saying when things go wrong and especially when things go wrong do people say or do people avoid difficult conversations or do people offer help do people point fingers and do you see blame or friction coming up when things go wrong or do you see how can i help what help do you need do you see offerings of help do you see coming together even more at the time of setbacks at the time of challenges or do you see people falling apart into their own silos and into their own personal care first right so this is the fifth outcome that you should look from any program it should bring you together as a team the in the language people should start speaking more of we and less of i right that's a, that's a key indicator that you're making progress if you see more of we language we are here to do this what will we do do this how can i help to make sure that we succeed right people will start offering their individual efforts energy to make sure the we succeed that's what you are looking for from any program that people are really coming together on their own and helping each other rather than either going and retreating back into their silos into their comfort zones or coming together but engaging in friction engaging in disagreement engaging in frustration and stress which is not productive which is not conducive and once again i want to point out that all of this is not possible if you have not simplified if you do not have the presence if you do not have the time on your calendar and if you do not have listening to understand and that relationship between those people to really see that team coming together so that's the fifth outcome that you're looking for right and when this happens you will not see one or two or a few heroes in your team you will see everybody as a champion and people will see everybody as a champion and they will make sure that they work according to that mindset right how can we help how can we make this team stronger rather than how can i solve this problem or rather than how i can rescue my team people will see how can we make the team stronger so it will be an amazing team spirit and you will be able to see a tremendous amount of energy people laughing more people uh, engaging each other with more communication but all in a healthy in a constructive in a positive way which will add to more momentum for what you are trying to do the sixth outcome and i think this is the more, maybe the most important one which you will see or you want to see in your organization after any such program or after en- engaging with any external coach or consultant is a level of commitment both for yourself as well as for your team that you have never seen before right imagine a parent's commitment for their child a parent will do anything for their child when the child needs it right they will do things which are outside of their skill set which are outside of their comfort zone but for a parent for a father or a mother to take care of their of their children there is no commitment i think which matches that and any program right and again i don't have to be the person uh, whether i am the person or not what i am telling you that people can show up with a level of commitment for their results for the business results that either their team their unit is producing or for you ceo like at the founder at the founder level as a whole that matches that commitment right there is no reasons or excuses of results not happening you entirely focus on the results and you act from a 100% commitment you do not look for reasons of why is this not happening either to the other people either to the situation you always look for what is it that we can do now given our commitment right so we let go of any kind of victim mentality any kind of finger pointing and all the fingers are basically coming to ourselves 
individually as well as a team to how what can we do now even in the face of setbacks right because surprises and setbacks are not going to go away no matter which program that you have right this is not going to be easy especially if you have a big dream get ready for uh, some uh, good surprises right if you do not have setbacks maybe you are aiming too low so setbacks is a given but how you deal with that are those challenges are those making you weaker or are those making you stronger right so the last outcome that you're looking for that people showing up in a way that every setback every missed opportunity actually becomes an opportunity to make you individually and as a team more stronger and you learn something from each setback failure for the future right you kind of become anti fragile where everything which happens either success or failure only ends up making you stronger for the future and especially if you have a big vision especially if you have something in the future which is not going to happen on its own and that's something which you have taken on as an individual or as an organization this last outcome commitment will allow you to take an unreasonable stand for the future will allow you to go out in the world and also with your teams and speak about the future that you want to create the vision that you see in a way that has complete certainty even if you do not know the way even if you only see setbacks even if you see only see challenges and you take a totally unreasonable stand for the future right just like a parent takes a stand for their child for the children even without knowing all the ways that they are going to take care of the child or even if they are capable of taking care of the children in the future and now similarly as a leader and your team of leaders will be able to show up with a level of commitment which is unmatched right which is not reliant on finding out all the strategic options which is not reliant on being skilled which is more reliant on showing up in a way as leaders as human beings that no matter what we will figure it out no matter how many ways fail we will figure out another way right that's leadership that's taking a stand for the future and this is the ultimate leverage that you have and in the end every result is produced by the commitment that you have every result right and a key part of any program any development program and especially if you work with me the commitment of the people that you're working with will go up so high or you will identify those who do not have that commitment and that's also a good thing but as a team as a company your commitment to the outcome that you want to the future that you want to see for yourself for your clients for your customers and for the world will go up so much it will go up so much that itself will create amazing amount of energy momentum and progress towards whatever that you're trying to see so to wrap this up simplification allows you to multiply right and to multiply you must simplify a key aspect of any leader's role any leadership team's role is to continuously deal with the complexity and get very clear on this is what we are going to deal with and this is not and we're not going to get lost in trivialities we're not getting not going to get lost and we are going to go directly to the heart of the matter which allows you to simplify first and then multiply and then take those big bold steps that you need to take to make the future that you have dreamed of as a reality so like like the sim very simple framework right this very simple framework of six choices you will be left with frameworks for each of these choices to tackle everything that comes your way right we have frameworks for marketing we have frameworks for business we have frameworks for almost everything that we do technical product marketing sales everything in business has a framework which we use for leadership and for people communication the real emotional stuff that happens between the people which is invisible we have no frameworks right we have very little frameworks or no frameworks what you will be left with is a complete set of tools and in fact i can show you i have a like like a something like that like something a, a guidebook like that which i often share uh, with people that i work with but you will have a set of very simple tools which will allow you first of all to simplify allow you to see what is actually happening well, allow you to take the complexities of life actually make it simple and once you make it simple you will actually know what to do or if you're facing a tough time with a person with an emotion or with a particular challenge you will exactly know the step to step step by step process to how to resolve that how to take 
progress and how to not make it worse. A key problem is many times we make things worse without even realizing that that is happening. Right? So stopping ourselves when we are making things worse is also an act of simplification. Right? So one thing which you will have is you will have something so simple for every aspect of leadership, every aspect of when you're talking to people, when you're dealing with people, even including your own self, you will know what to do and you will have a structure which will be acting as a guide for you, right? Even after the program, even without the program instructors or the coaches and consultants that, that you might have, right? And if you want to take this forward, right? Now, here is what we will do, right? If this excites you, if you want to take this forward, if you want to see what is possible, if you want to get a taste of what I am talking about here in depth, reach out to me. What we'll do is we'll schedule three to four hours of time, either just with you or with some key members of your team. And I will show you exactly where you are not simplifying, where you need to simplify, how much is that costing you, and then how can you multiply and maybe even produce more results, better results that you're currently thinking with less effort, less resources, less people than you think that it will take you to get there, right? And my intention with this process is only to help you. That's why I do what I do. So once again, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. And I invite you to listen to this another time, a couple of times, in fact, really get the sense of what I am saying here, what I am trying to communicate here and the power that this can have for your company, for what you're trying to do. Till then, keep doing what you're doing, keep choosing leadership and keep having fun. Thank you.